How are you guys? Life is good. Thank you. Good, good. First of all, uh, congratulations on, on the series. It is a absolute wild roller coaster ride. That's um, what we're going for. <laughs> now, I'm curious as to how, how you both got involved in the project because it looks as though it was it started a little while back with um, Craig Hodges, a friend of the family, yeah. who seemed to have been documenting uh, the yeah. story for the family. How did you both get involved in the project? Yeah, no, great, great question. Um, so, Craig is was a childhood friend of Travis, who is Gary's son, right? And so as a childhood friend, this was a story that he grew up with, which we love. Right. That's kind of what you want, right? It's this kind of backyard, like, my dad's better than your dad, you know? Right. And sure enough, of course, nobody believed anything. And to Craig's credit, he chased it down. You know, he went, he would knock on their door. It's in the show and it's real, you know? He would really would chase it down. And, and to his credit, he started shooting, really thinking he wanted to make a scripted series, right? And so he partnered with a screenwriter, Phil was at a Sonoma Film Festival. And go ahead. And uh, <laughs> I was, well, I was at Sonoma, so there's wine there. And I was at the bar and I'm just hanging out, talking. I'm in English. I like to talk to people and, and meet the screenwriter, a guy called John Crawford, who's writing the fictional version of the story. And he starts telling me, I'm like, so what's it about? What happens? And he gets like a third of the way in. I'm like, wait, but this is, you made this up? He was like, no, no, this is based on a real story. And he carries on. He tells me some more. I'm like, wait, wait, but you made this bit up, right? He's like, no, no, this is real. And he kept, he kept doing that for about 25 minutes. And this, this, like this chapter after chapter after chapter of the story just getting crazier and crazier and crazier. At the end of it, I was like, I need that guy's number. I need to call him. I want to make a documentary. <laughs> and yeah, and the sweet spot for us is, is it weird? <clears throat> and is it real? You know, and so right. when Phil back to the office, I was like, I don't know, uh, it sounds made up. And so thanks to all the fact checking and all of our, our research and stuff, and also seeing Craig is really great, just archival of people going on tangents, basically, and then trying to figure out how are we going to piece all this together. Well, that know? was my next question. How difficult was it to piece all of that together because it i mean and some of the stories that they tell over the over the it was almost 20 years were yeah. verbatim it seems exactly um I, that's a great point i'm sorry go ahead yeah no but it was I mean, did that make it easier more difficult to to piece the, the narrative together both because on the one hand there was so much of it and a lot of it wasn't uh filmed the way we needed it to so we did go ahead and of course we wanted the modern day perspective so and that's such a big piece of it so we shot many, many hours of every single person on that, in that group again. Right. So we sort of starting from the beginning, but then using that archive as a weapon. And by that, I mean, showing passage of time, showing characters aging, showing credibility. And when we realized that they were telling the same stories verbatim over and over again, or at least close to verbatim, we're like, this is great. Number one, it's real. Number two, we can do that flutter effect where we can show people, hey, First of all, it's hilarious watching people say the same thing over and over again. Right. But secondly, it's 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 it speaks to memory and it speaks to just how ingrained a lot of this was in their in their minds as a as a family. The it was interesting because um you did mention you know, you get you see them age and it almost became a, like almost a um a sub story, especially watching his son and you see and you don't really get into it but you see his life has changed considerably over the course of the last you know twenty plus years. Um, and that was really interesting to watch because you, you, you don't really know the context, but you know his life is, has changed quite a bit. Correct. Yeah, if you're talking about the story as sort of consequences or repercussions, right. you know, who's, who's left holding the bag? I think both in Gary's story and politically, uh, you, have these, you have this effect where you see these characters aging. You don't need to ask a question. You know, it, right. you're presenting to the audience, this is the living embodiment of the effect of this story right. on, these, on these folks. It seemed like each episode had a slightly different, um, like documentary subgenre, um, it's so slightly different tone. It's it definitely it's felt this is part of the same story, but there was a different tone to each one. The first one, I see more uh, comparable to your your previous work with uh, Cold Case Files and uh, Murder in the Heartland. Um, can you just talk about was that intentional or was that just dictated by the the, the narrative of the story? Uh, super intentional yeah um two two reasons why one is i think naturally the story laid out that way and when ari and i wrote it initially we laid out the story in these sort of three chapters very distinct chapters and it, and it kind of naturally kind of lent into the most important powerful sort of reveals in the story or changes in the story 
and that led to a tone shift. And so we looked at it and we're like, well, it's the episode one. And remember also we're doing this in a, in a, in the back, the backdrop of documentary having a moment, you know, so the audience is very familiar with the different genres. So right. we felt like, what can we do as filmmakers to kind of subvert that a little bit? So you go in and you're expecting this to be, you know, a small town murder mystery, potentially episode one. And it kind of plays like that. And we, we've definitely lent into that idea, perhaps something more familiar to a kind of a true crime audience. And then you turn the page, you have a massive change, something gets a big, massive surprise in, in episode one. And it leads to episode two. And it's this sort of this romp, this sort of crazy 80s, nostalgia dripping romp through 80s Miami and some kind of the South American connections and drugs and planes. And it's crazy. And then you get to episode three and Ari and I are both massive sort of uh, paranoia movie, 70s paranoia movie fans. And you get to all the president's men. And it's, right. it's sort of, it was, it definitely felt like three different tones. And we felt also, you know, um, you know, I think that one of the challenges of turning a, turning a story into a three-parter is keeping the audience engaged. And that's obviously tonally, if you can shift the tone and shape shift, you're always going to be engaging. Well, I, mean, I personally probably would not have watched the third episode. That's something, not something I would be drawn to normally. But after watching one and two, I was 100% engaged. Yay. So, you know, it definitely was affected. Thank you for saying that. The family was very open. Uh, not just with you, but with, with Craig as well. Now with Craig, I, I understand to a certain extent because it was, you know, the front of the family. Um, was it difficult for them to open up to you? And did you feel that you were being exploitive at any point? You know, I'm glad you asked because that's, you know, we have a lot of experience dealing with really sensitive material, right? So we do a lot of, as you mentioned, true crime, where you're often dealing with people who have um, experienced, you know, unbelievable trauma. So we're pretty prepped for that. Um, and I think we try really hard not to go on preconceived notions, right? So we know that we're dealing with something potentially sensitive and some people will be more sensitive to certain things than others, right? So you go into it really tiptoeing and being extraordinarily respectful as can be to feel out how comfortable they are and what kind of perspective they've gained over the years on their own story. I feel like this particular group was, was, was more self-aware than usual in the sense that I think they realized, and this may have been because Craig had been working with them for a while. So we really benefited from the time we got there sure. to their comfort level already being up here. And I think once we spent enough time with them, because a lot of it is about time, they came to trust us and realize we're shining a light on the experience of what they went through. We're shining a light on, I think, the bigger ramifications of what Gary's story is really about but we're not judging the story, hopefully. And we're certainly not asking the audience or telling the audience what to think. Do you, uh, many documentaries, um, the narrative is created in the editing room. Um, did you feel you needed to do that? Did you have to massage the narrative at all or was this kind of laid out for you? We had an incredible team of editors. Um, I know everyone probably says that, but in this particular case, um, a couple of people, especially this guy, David Tillman and, and Evan Wise, you know, they were really, um, in the time the documentary has really come into its own and become a much more commercial genre, you've got guys like this who, what they're able to do is take our ideas, and Phil's a great editor too, but we sit with them and um, it's a little bit of a process of elimination, but a lot of it is also just allowing them to take something that we thought we knew exactly what we wanted it to be and run with it for a little bit, you know? Um, these are not, you know, just sort of run of the mill editors. These are guys who also have a point of view and also have questions about the story. So it was almost like if they're cool with it and they like it, great, because they're really harsh critics also. Sure. You know? So it was definitely a collaboration in that sense. You know, it's battle testing ideas the entire yeah. time. And just, I think it was. Uh, sorry, I, think, I think they questioned me every step of the way. So, <laughs> I mean, because also it's it's about sort of pushing the material. It's about pushing the story. It's about pushing the genre. Uh, and a lot of the time, you know, I think, I, I, I think you know, program makers, filmmakers, and editors, you know, they're, they're working in constrictions. You're, you're working in, with restrictions and uh, rules. And our job was just to take take the gloves off and say no rules. Let's let's try. Let's try. 
but just sure. being coaching. And then at some point you go, okay, like we have, we have deadlines, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> look at it and make a decision. And that's where, you know, I tend to come in and go, nah, <laughs> you know, or that's yeah. So, uh, well, I would, again, congratulations on it. I, you know, I would say I would love to see a scripted version of this, but I don't think it would compare to what you guys created. Um, so um, good work. Thanks so much. Thank that you really so much. A lot.